and welcome to Revolutin. This is a show that celebrates the creatives who are revolutioning our town and changing the way that people see Luton. You may not realize it, but there are so many great artists, musicians, writers right here in Luton. It's our mission to shine a spotlight on the cultural goings on in the town. So please join us for the ride. And first up today, we're going gaming as we interview Peter Mason, a game app developer through his struggles and challenges to bring a game to market. Growth in the app games industry has been the fastest expanding market in the UK, contributing £2.2 billion in 2020, which makes it a profitable enterprise if you have the passion, the knowledge and the determination to stick at it. My mission is to tell the story of an app developer in Luton and what it takes to create and bring app game ideas to life alongside the struggles and triumphs of being an app game creator. The app game is called World Domino Ocean. So it's similar to the idea of dominoes. Everyone's sort of familiar with the normal concept of dominoes. Dominoes, you know, obviously it's a game that's been around for a long time. It's been around for sort of you know, decades or centuries or so. And so it's like that game. Uh, but with my game, you're not only matching the numbers of the dots, but you're matching the colours only. So you're matching the colours and the numbers of the dots initially, and you've got lots of different levels. So you start off matching numbers and colours, and on my game, you've got different squares. So you're landing on different squares. So you're going around almost like a board in the app. And then some squares you land on, they have special effects and all that sort of stuff. So it's basically like Domino's basically brought to the next level. These game creators have an uncontrolled passion for app games and they need to know that the people who play their games love them with that same passion. It's important to know the story behind where the games come from and why endless time and money is spent developing these games. What is the ultimate goal? So the world I sort of keep up to date with the latest sort of app game and stuff. So I've got like some, some developer groups that I sort of, that I'm plugged into. So I sort of listen to what people are doing, sort of like some indie developers and all that sort of stuff. So I keep, keep up, up to date with what they're doing. And also look on the app store. So I see what's coming out and, you know, what's in and all that sort of stuff. So I'm um, sort of keep clued up by, you know, keeping on the app stores regularly and having a look at the latest games that are being released and all that sort of stuff, basically. Other projects that I've worked on or considering to work on. So basically, um, I, the project that I've actually worked on is a, a Domino's based board game called Dominotion. So I actually got a, an actual physical board game created a couple of years ago, got it sort of made in China and got it sort of shipped over to me. Um, so I've worked on that project. That's been pretty good. Sold sold over 500 games so far, and that's due to be going into one of the major retail stores. Um, it was actually due to be going into one of them in November, but because of lockdown, that was that had to be put on hold. That's due to be going in, into one of those stores pretty soon, so that's that's good. Um, yeah, people like the game. I've sold that game, and people love that game. I've got a lot of positive feedback about that game. Luton has recognised the shortfall in the gaming industry, and now Luton Arts Fund have embraced a 10-year strategic vision for the arts, cultural and creative industries. It's a vision that builds on the strengths of the local cultural scene and aims to make Luton an inclusive flagship place of culture. Other people that have inspired me, uh, one, of, one of them is Tyler Perry. So Tyler Perry sort of came from sort of very humble beginnings and, you know, and believed, had a dream to do like a theatre play and, you know, he kept on believing. He was getting a lot of small crowds for, for many years, but he kept on sticking and kept on digging and kept on pushing, kept on going at it, you know, and, and, and it pulled off for him. He, he, he cre he'd done a great play. He got many people looking at it. Um, he created films for, from that play. So he, and now he's doing very, very well. He's, he's got land and he's doing some exceptional things. So he's been very inspiring. For my game for the app World Domination, the release is not not set in stone, so it could be late February or early to mid March. It's, you know, I'm I'm getting it submitted to the app stores, and it depends on approval and all that sort of stuff. So it's not set in stone, but I'd say late February or if not, it'll be it'll be more likely to be you know beginning to mid March of this year, 2021. Some problems, some of the sort of problems that I face sort of getting this getting the, the app done is that I'm working with a lot of freelancers. So I haven't necessarily got my got my own staff that, you know, I've got in an office, so right, can you get this done? And here's the deadline, take this done. 
let's take a general perspective and get a current sense of what it's like to be an app game developer in this current climate, as well as the reasons why they want to do this in the first place. My, my advice would basically be to that if you want to create games or create apps or you basically do many different things in life, you can't do everything on your own. So you're going to need people around you. You're going to need either a team or you're going to need some people around you to help you. So you're going to either need business mentors or you're going to need people that are, whether they're good at art or whether they're good at different things. Because if you're good at art, you need someone who, who can help with developing. And if you're really an expert at, at developing games, you might need an artist or someone who can do music or, or, or video or something like that. So you're certainly going to need to have people around you, whether you have a team or whether you have people that you can sort of go to to get help. Wow, well, we just want to wish Peter good luck and I'm sure the app will be a big success. Now on to some music. The UK rap culture is growing and influencing music. Luton has become a boiling pot for emerging artists. With Luton born stars reaching our screens, we wanted to talk to a rising talent about their experience on the music industry within Luton. Imps was born and raised in Luton. He is a rapper, lyricist and clothing designer. With years of experience, we spoke with Imps about what Luton has to offer for artists like himself. The word industry is a over explanation of what it is here. It's not really, I wouldn't even call it an industry because um, there's not that many studios probably one or two like that actually commercial studios and then once you've recorded the music I mean there are radio stations but it's just political getting your getting your stuff out there it's just, it's very tribal in Luton people look after their own darling darling you got me calling calling girl in the boy starling starling them boring boring Love music, but the first time I really decided that I wanted to do music was when I saw So Solid on the screen doing 21 Seconds and that. 2014 probably started writing bars. Obviously, it was like grind, it was Garage going into grind, ended up in a grind crew called V.A. Um, you know, probably five years later, I kind of progressed from that to sort of starting a sort of label called After Hours Entertainment. Fast forward from that, I'm here by myself, still here, still pushing on. Imps recently released a silent trailer shot in Luton Town Centre, showcasing some of Luton's most iconic landmarks. I uploaded the clip and I just didn't put any audio on it. So I just, I just kind of wanted to give the feel without actually letting them hear what the music's going to be about. I don't know, something just told me, let me just take it back to the roots and go to town, let's go to go to Galaxy, go to Exchange and go to these other different places, um, Tasty's, Sam's, um, you know, just train station and stuff like that. I just wanted it to be about the music. Throughout all the years that I've done music, I personally have never shot a video like that, kind of showcasing the area, you kind of just take it for granted being from here. But it actually looks good on camera, so I'm excited for it to come out. Lockdown was extremely unexpected, with many brands and businesses having to become creative when engaging with fans and gaining new ones. Imps is one of the many artists that took to social media. In 2021, I don't think you can even be an artist without being on social media these days. That like, just doesn't really work. It's the main form of advertisement these days, uh, literally. Like, you can't get ads on the TV as an up-and-coming artist. Um, no one really even cares about TV like that in terms of music anymore. Um, so it's literally imperative to promote on social media. The way that I fuck up these challenges, rappers go see me for damages, truly the mad shit. I had your chick on a banister, blowing up out of my canister, look at the stamina. I got my shoes from Italy, on my G's got a heavy metal. Metallica, I pulled it out and embarrassed her, now you're looking for a barrel. I take my hat off to BBC Queen Cowboys. If, if, if we're going to class them as a new one, then 
yeah, they've helped me. They've put they've played my stuff on radio a lot. I've had interviews there. But in terms of you know opportunities, mm, over the years I've had you know I've, I've performed at a few different events here and there, organised by elite and um, event organisers. I've been on radio a few times. I've been on like jam work a couple of times and stuff like that. But I don't feel like these people and institutions push Luton artists as hard as they should. For aspiring artists up and coming in Luton, I would say it's good if you have a solid um, support circle who support your music and stuff like that. And try and look for maybe outlets that are outside of Luton because the thing is, as soon as you build a buzz outside of Luton, everyone here is going to be, you know, you know, they were, they were supporting you from day one anyway. But um, it's kind of backwards how it works. So, yeah, that would be my number one thing is just go where you need to go and promote where you need to promote to be heard. Don't, don't rely solely on getting love here because in my experience, it might not be the same for everyone, but it's, it's a... It's a cold word, man. It's a, it's a lonely word, but it's worth it. If you love music, then you'll know that it's worth it. Man. Imps's talents and ambitions have allowed him to continue to succeed with his music. But he does have concern about the lack of support for artists like himself within the community. Luton has been named the top commuter spot with many people moving here from London. We wouldn't be surprised if we see a lot more facilities and events in the near future. It's so nice to see raw talent right here in Luton and we wish Imps the biggest success. And we're going to keep our musical theme for now as we speak to a couple of musicians and ask them how the lockdown has affected their businesses and how they have made use of the lockdown to improve themselves. Take a look. My name is Sam Legagini. My name is Emmanuel and popularly known as Mr. Soji Amin. <laughs> I've been doing this uh, music stuff since the uh, 90s. It's almost 31, 32 years now. I am an artist and I've been doing this for the past 15 years now. I wake up with music, music, practice listening to the people that uh, I chosen like a mentor. Different kind of music. Yeah, uh, I was a student of music technology in the University of Bedfordshire. And when getting to the university, I planned to be a music producer and an artist, like what I used to do before I got into the university. And getting into the university, I pick up radio and I've been doing both music production, radio production, and radio presenting. <laughs> And I'm still learning as well. So I've been doing it. Uh, I, can, uh, I can just say maybe to summarize like 31 years. Oh yeah, the, the lockdown, lockdown. <laughs> the lockdown, I'll, in, in a way I can say the lockdown has been good to me because um, there are some things that I, I've got no idea of how to do it before the lockdown, which I've been doing for a very long time, but. I never got to improve on them. But the lockdown has really helped me a lot, whereby I can easily produce, mix, and master my own music, which previously, before the lockdown, I, I, I had to produce it, give it to someone to mix and master, or give it to someone to produce, mix, and master. But now I can easily produce my own music, 
mix it and master it. Lockdown, lockdown, lockdown. <laughs> Uh, I know every musician or musicologist have, um, have a big problem about this, and then it's almost a year now. Financially, um, even in terms of uh, practicing, it has really affected, I can say, me personally, and for almost a year now. So, even a few months that the lockdown has been easy, and then another lockdown again, it, it's, it's been so tough. But we keep on breathing, we're still alive. Yeah, I've been, I've been able to make the best of uh, some things in this uh, pandemic period, uh, especially in terms of recording. I've improved myself in, um, in, a way, in such a way that I'm able to stand on my own to do some recording personally and I'm working on some, working on, uh, on the software called Logic. <laughs> Yeah, the, the, the lockdown in a way, financially, is not too good for me considering the kind of work I do because every weekend I have to go for a show and join parties every week. Yeah, we have to play at the party every week and that. But during the lockdown, things have been so, I, won't, I don't want to use the word difficult, but things have been so, so not so easy, really, not so easy. Because financially, the, every money that comes in every weekend, totally stop. But what we, what, let me say myself, let me speak for myself, what I tend to do is people do Zoom parties, so all I have to do is just produce the music, record the video, and mix it, and send down to, to, to wherever I celebrate the party, or I'll play, I'll join the Zoom meeting and play the music myself right from my studio. I can see it. My home studio is right behind me, yeah. <laughs> And uh, to the extent of, of being able to master, do mastering myself. Yes, I've been able to make the best out of the lockdown. Uh, try to improve myself um, in different ways. Yeah, well, it was a lockdown that brought about the home studio. How to make proper work recording my own instrument as a guitarist. To, to, to sound better. Previously, I used to go to London, mix, record music, mix, and master it there. Then, but now I have to try and develop my own home studio where I can always do stuff in my house. It's not been easy, but we have to keep keep on keeping on. We have different kind of performance kind of, uh, uh, programs that we have to do in order to keep on all of the cancer. We didn't have to let the lockdown break us down, but I really have really made use of. Um, the, 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 the lockdown actually I've met the lockdown in terms of people when I said Wow, I loved that guitar and they are so talented. Let's just hope that once lockdown is over, they'll be able to get back on stage ASAP. And that's it. Our first show has come to an end. It was short, but sweet. But don't worry, we will have more for you next month. So if you want to stay up to date with what's happening in the Luton art scene, please make sure you tune in again to our next edition of Revoluton. Bye for now.